Okay, so um, I'm uh, John Preston, I'm the director of public works for Santa Cruz County. I've been with the county about 26 years. I came in after the earthquake. Um, so I saw a lot of damage back then, and I've seen what happened with this past winter, and it's, I, I can tell you right now, it's worse this winter than I've ever seen. No one can remember this type of damage with these storms that came in, what we would call an extraordinary year. So we put a lot of effort into opening roads, you know, through the winter storms, and we had a massive amount of trees, uh, landslides, mudslides, and so you probably saw a lot of our crews out there or you saw contractors out there. Um, I, again, I went back 50 years and talked to a lot of people and no one's seen anything like this. So this is, I can tell you, Monterey County had about 60 million. We're at $114 million. And most counties that I've talked to, and I have an association with most counties, um, public works directors, they're, they're five to 20 million. We're 114, we're the, we're the winners. <laughs> we just sent an email, if you saw on our Facebook, if you, you really want some humor, sometimes look at our Facebook, we, we, we have some humor as civil engineers, but we sent an email down to Caltrans and said, you know, you gotta speed with that big sur slide. That, that thing is massive. It, it yeah. created 13 new acres of material out there. I would not recommend going out there. And you know, I'm thinking now that the bridge was collapsed before Nepente, you know, on, on the big sur side, right. probably saved a lot of lives because that, that that massive amount of dirt coming down would have taken out anything in there. So it's probably a, a relief that no one is probably on that road. I hope there's no one on that road because that is that is that is amazing slide. Um, I'm the president of the county engineers of the 58 counties this year. I've worked up from secretary and vice president and, and president. I'll be past president by December 2nd. December 2nd. What it gave me is an opportunity to do a lot of advocacy in Washington, D.C. and in uh, Sacramento. And we, we worked on a pretty hard on a gas tax increase this year. I know you guys don't want to pay any more gas for, for gas, but honest to God, we need that money in California. They forgot, they forgot about infrastructure in California. So this is the first thing we've seen since 1994 in gas tax. What you actually saw were, in previously there was two 18 cent gas taxes that the state had on us and they took one down to nine cents over the last four years. We saw that drop in gas tax. We lost approximately three million dollars a year out of our budget, and we're not rich anyway. You know, so um, we, don't, we don't get general fund money into public works. We, we, the money that comes is either grants, gas tax, or whatever we can you know, steal or borrow, still beg or borrow, but we don't get general fund monies for roads. Um, Has it always been that way? It's been that way since 2001. That's Last time we got money from General Fund. We get a little bit of like $100,000 for administration and some stuff like that, but we're not like the sheriffs who gets you know, $90 million a year or health services or others. We don't get it and we don't, we don't expect to get it. Um, I've given up trying to get it. But so I've worked really hard to bring resources into the county. I worked on the Measure D and thank you if you voted for that, that's going to help. But I'll tell you, this gas tax that's coming in uh, over the next five, seven years, it's going to be really helpful for building our roads. Um, so I've been director since 2009. I have a bachelor's and master's in civil engineering. I have another degree, too. You guys don't need to know about that, but it's <laughs> more agricultural. But um, we have, I have six different divisions under me. Um, solid waste, which is we just signed a new franchise agreement uh, for the hauler, green waste, if you, if you know about green waste. Transportation, well, we pretty much sucked over the last five, seven years because we just haven't any money. Sanitation, we're rebuilding most of our sanitation facilities. That's Live Oaks of Kell, Lamar, Boulder Creek, Davenport, um, and also um, down south in Watsonville area. Drainage. It's not that great right now. We have a lot of drainage problems on our rural roads and we hope to rebuild a lot of that. We're also doing capital projects, which means we're doing the new sheriff's jail down in Watsonville. We're doing the libraries now. So, you know, we're kind of like an all-purpose public works. Then administrative services is my overseer that does with all the secretaries and budgeting and stuff like that. So um, it's a busy, it's a busy time in public works. And this is our new logo that we, we generated last year. If you, I didn't realize it, but you can actually see a bird in there, but it's actually a road with the sun. But, uh, so part of the County Engineers Association, they, they'd like to name you after, you after you become past president. They give you a bird name, or they used to. I don't know if they still do. So that was kind of coincidental that you want the bird. 
Um, let's see, go down. Okay, so, you know, essentially we've had pretty good weather the last five years. We had a 2011 storm, or, yeah, 2011 it hit us pretty hard. And I would say every four or five years we get hit hard, but nothing like this year. This is like, we never really got more than a couple days break than the next storm it hit, and it was dumping, you know, 10 inches of rain overnight. So it was a massive amount. John, do, do you have, is there any back in the envelope estimate on how much damage in addition to that is on private roads and driveways? Yeah, we, we have been working with, um, there's county service areas, and I don't have those exact numbers, but we have county service area, private roads, and both of them got impacted. Private roads are looking at the county service areas and said, I wish it was a county service area, because yeah. you're funded through FEMA at that point. So mm -hmm. we're encouraging, if you, have, if you live on a private road, you may want to consider that. I'm trying to talk um, Paradise Park into becoming a CSA. And they, they said, why would I do that? I said, if there's an event, you get 75% funding. I mean, that's, that's on top to repair your roads. We have a private, we have a private, private road that lost a bridge and those folks are going to put about a thousand dollars a month in for a good length of time to rebuild the bridge. It's very expensive as opposed to getting 75 percent funding through through FEMA. Yes? Is the CSA only for um, private oh, roads or? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's what's called a county service area. Yeah. So private road will have to go through LAFCO and get into the CSA. And essentially you put so much money into a pool and whoever lives furthest up the road generally pays the most for the maintenance of the road. And you have control of that money. We don't do anything with the money, other than I think there's a very smidgen of a administrator because we've got to pay the auditor control report. But essentially, it's a way to go if you want to have you know some assurance that you know, your roads are going to be able to be repaired. That's for private roads only, though? Yeah. I mean, we have taken some public roads and tried to make them CSAs, but we haven't really got a lot of support. We can do that. I'm looking at Ocean Street Extension working with Paradise Park right now. See, you know, they want the, that road to be approved out there. And I said, I've got this stuff going on right now. I can't even look at your road because it still looks pretty good to me sitting on bedrock. Um, $114 million, that is astronomical for us. That means we're, we generally do maybe $10 million of project every year. And we're now looking at 20 over the next five, 20 a year for the next five years. Uh, and there's probably 230 sites now that we've identified. Split equally between Federal Highway Administration and we like the Federal Highway Administration because you work through Caltrans. It's easier to get the project approved as opposed to FEMA and Cal OES. And they're very slow. Uh, they give us a little higher amount of money, but oh my gosh, it's going to take getting them engaged at the FEMA side is really difficult. Um, they've already reviewed two of the declared events in Santa Cruz County. They still have to come back for a third. And then we used to be able to write a what's called a project worksheet uh, in the field with FEMA. They don't do that anymore. They come out and assess it. We give them some paperwork. They go up to wherever they go and they say, well, we disagree or agree with this. And so we're actually hiring a consultant to help us deal with 100 or so FEMA applications to fix our roads. And, and when I say FEMA roads, I'm talking about the more rural, local roads. Um, we converted a lot of our roads from here to FHWA roads because we knew it was easier to work through them. And we get we get a better response working through Caltrans and stuff. And we do our own what's called a disaster. We do our own disaster uh, assessment form and we submit it in yes or no. We get almost immediate answers. So we're about eighty five percent through our disaster aid forms through FHWA. We haven't even got anywhere with you yet. So again we're bringing on a consultant to help us with that. What's the split between the two files? It's, it's like anywhere from 10 to 25 percent, our local match on either side, you know, roughly. And, you know, the time you get done with FEMA and, F and Cal OES, you, you invest a lot of time and anger and everything else that goes with it. So they're just, just, it's just a real problematic group to work. We hope that it's better this year. Um, the other thing that happens, we have probably 13, 15 million dollars of damage of, of contracted work that we've already done to open some of our roads, like Glenwood, you know, that, that skyline. skyline, yeah, yeah, that we hope to get reimbursed in a year or two. So we are actually in the negative, like 13 or 14 million dollars with our auditor controller. So we have to wait for that money to come in to reimburse it. 
And so we expect we could be as high as 20, 25, 30 million dollars in the hall before we get reimbursement on some of this stuff. Where's that carry on the books? It's not mm -hmm. negative interest on us. So yeah. is that Bear Creek Road there? I'm gonna to get to it. <laughs> I'm curious, how much? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. This is Nelson Road. Um, if you knew about Nelson Road outside of um, Scotts Valley, we put a million dollar wall in up above there and the whole mountain came down. And if you go on our, our website, our Facebook, you'll see, you click it and you'll see some music and you see a couple of rocks coming down, all of a sudden this whole massive rocks come down. It's really kind of cute if you want to see it. But it was massive rocks that came down, just covered the whole road. This year, they lost the culvert. We have a temporary bridge out there right now to get these people through because they didn't have a very good access. So we tried to respond to folks that had were completely cut off to kind of get them open as soon as possible. We have a couple roads out there. I don't know if we're ever going to open because they're they're just simply gone. Like like Redwood Lodge, maybe one of those. That's what I'm worried about. Great. I, you live up there. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Well, I haven't been up there to look at it yet, but you know what? I had staff up there, and I'm going. It's that bad, huh? So we don't know yet. Yeah. You've seen it then? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. They live right by it. No. Okay. Um, okay, this is, um, I think this is Bear Creek. Yeah, this is Bear Creek. This is at, uh, just right outside of the, uh, Boulder Creek. Um, we're actually well into design on this. And what's going to happen, there's, you know, just per chance, I was in Sacramento on a safety meeting with the heads of DMV and CHP, and I was sitting there, I'm going, hey, God, why am I here? But I was invited up there to talk about you know, issues like this. And just so happened, I sat next to the FHWA, Federal Highway Administrator for, for the Western States. You know, and I'm going, oh, this is a good guy to know. <laughs> and I said, do you realize that Caltrans has the ability to go out and do immediate repairs like what's happening in the bridge down in Big Sur? I said, why can't we do that? Because I've already talked to Caltrans, and they said, why can't we do that? Well, you can't do that. You have to go through all the environmental permitting, design, and then bid it and construct. And I said, no, we have this road, SoCal Sanzi Road, and others that are critical roads to this community. When Highway 17 went down, people couldn't get out of North County. We had 67 roads closed at one time. It was, uh, so I said, why not? Then, then we called Panetta, Jimmy Panetta and Anna Eshoo, and they swooped in and helped us resolve the issue that these roads are important enough that we're gonna do emergency openings. So it's Valencia Road that, that serves the school in Aptos Village, Bear Creek Road, Soquel Sanzi Road. Um, I think there's another one on Soquel Drive in the village. And there might be a couple others like Glenwood and those, you know, so it's, it allowed me to say, why not? And, and, and he came and says, why not? And you're right, why not? We have the ability, so we're gonna, we're gonna be under construction here shortly with, with Bear Creek. They're actually gonna have to do two stages. The first, they're gonna put tie backs underneath the road, then they're gonna restore it with a wall. With a wall? Yeah. And hey, then there's... Old timers uh, actually remember a bridge at that location before the culvert was uh, put in below it. I love to have a bridge there. Yeah. There must have been a reason why it didn't yeah. do it again. The Culver Trail? The Culver Trail, yeah. It, it's sitting down over here, I think. Um, so there's two sites that were that we were allowed to do emergency repairs on Bear Creek, so that's going to happen. And the same consultant's working on that. It's drill track engineers. We They've done some of the seawalls in uh, Pleasure Point, if you've seen that, for us, and they've done some other stuff. They're really good. They're a good engineering firm, so we're real happy with them. Um, we're, nearing, we're nearing to get out there. The only thing is, we got a call from the Corps of Engineers say, well, you're no longer an emergency. I was going, what do you mean by that? Because this is a road that's critical to this county. If we have a fire up there, we gotta get fire trucks up there. We have 17 goes down. This is one lane in a couple of spots. So I'm ready to call our Congress people and say, I want you to bounce their heads in the Corps of Engineers in San Francisco because they're not listening to us. So that's the type of stuff that we have to do often is to use our political resources. I hope this is not take too much. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, but well, philosophically, the roads are going to get fixed. They are going to get fixed. So, so why do we need to have all this bureaucracy and slowing of the pace? The money's going to be there. So you might as well just get the money. You see we, what I'm saying? 
We would hope so. I mean, yeah. it's, but it's there is a bureaucracy that's there, and it's you know, and we jump through that bureaucracy because this would be a year later. This is another side of America. This would be okay. a year before we got to this. We went through the normal process. So, folks, this is really important that we are opening these roads at a sooner, faster pace than ever before. Some of the big arterials. So, um, this is at 8.02 Bear Creek. So I drove this with Anna Eshu. <laughs> okay, here's your famous road, liberal hits off the Silk Hill says road. Obviously, the Browns are right there. They have a house right there. Yeah, they're yeah, they're right there. There was a massive slide, ancient slide that came all the way through there. So this is this has slipped out probably two or three times in the past. Um, I've heard at least two times from some of our older guys. So right now, they went down 20 feet, put a, put a drainage, French drain in, and it's, it's sucking up a lot of water and taking it out. Right now, we are backfilling that site. And it's, um, we're hoping that it will stabilize enough that we can open the road, but we don't know yet. And because this thing goes all the way down to the creek, and it's, it's got a slip plane all the way down where it just did this big rotational thing. Um, we're hoping that it's stable enough that we can stay, you know, put the put the material in there. We went right up the right up the road and got the material, and so they're out there replacing it. If it holds and we know it, we feel comfortable, we will open this road. If it does not, we're in for a longer haul. We've looked at two different options. Um, one is to put a bridge out there, a temporary bridge, but it has railings on both sides, which impacts you know, the Browns. We're going to have to do something about that. If it holds, like really holds. We ultimately want to put a bridge out there, a permanent bridge across this area with a railing only on this side and we don't in impact the Browns. So we're really kind of praying right now that this is gonna hold and it's dried out enough that we put that drain down there. But you know, this is, this is, this is really tough engineering on, on our side right now, so. One question, when you say ancient slide, yeah. what do you mean by that? It could be 100 years, it could be 1,000 years. So you, if, you, if you look at the, if you look at the Browns place and you look up, you can see that there was, you know, a lot of material came down at one time. Um, just speaking of that, we saw, and you probably saw it out there, you saw large clumps of material come down, trees sitting on the roads and things like that. And a lot of times we had to wait till it dried up enough that we could clear it or get our, get our contractors out there. So it, it's, it's definitely a challenge. It was definitely a challenge this year. Our guys, I've never seen work that hard. Our crews, um, our engineers, the contractors that helped us. It was an amazing year. You know, there's just the Can magnitude you, of this. You know this failed in 82 as so. well. Yeah, I think um, I heard about that. That's that's that probably, was yeah, 82 was a bad storm year. I know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why we're hoping that that French train is going to hold it. And, and it's deep, and it's, you know, it's Do carrying you a lot of water. big rocks on the bottom? What are you just putting in there? Just right? Just drain rock right now. And then um, I was, when I first came to work here, I was another site on, on SoCal San Zero, and I still remember it, that we had some massive redwoods that were way down deep. That's what they built the road is. Yeah. That, was the, that was the bridge that they built on top of it. So when that, when that gave out, I was up there, I don't know, I was like, I was young then. Um, <laughs> the redwoods were floating down. You know, they washed out, and it was like, that was something. But you know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we can open this road. But I, I'm not going to promise you anything because we just don't know until that slide is is stabilized. Aren't there two slides on Soquel Sound? Yeah, yeah, there is, and we're working on that too. Yeah. yeah. Is there a creek down below there? Yes. Yeah. Big creek. Okay. Yeah. So um, this was at East Ianni. Boy, did we actually had people um, caught in there for a couple weeks. This was. This was so wet, and as they tried to remove it, it was still coming down. It was just unsafe. There was actually a pregnant woman who uh, lived in this area. It was, it was not a good scene for us. We were trying to get it open as soon as possible. But this is typical. We had this on Valencia. We had it on a lot of different roads. You know, where either oak trees or redwoods are sitting in the middle of the road. Um, again, it's a, it's a massive slide. It just saturated soil, and it just comes down. Okay, this is a washed out culvert and Green Valley Road at close to mile 1.85. Um, we had a lot of this stuff. It's it it just like, there, everything was overwhelmed. So what, what do you do with those? Do you throw it in? Or? We, we will excavate that road out and put a new culvert in. And 
generally, if you guys know about the Valencia, have you been out there, Aptos Village, and seen the good work out there? There's like a couple different things going on. We're putting a signal in at 12 Gulch and SoCal, but if you go up um, Trout Gulch, you run into Valencia Road. There's a school just beyond this culvert, and the road dropped like 10 feet, you know, and just there, the culvert gave out. So, um, we were just gonna drop a new culvert down there. It's like 60 feet deep, so you gotta shore it all the way down. It's a $3.1 million project. But oh, hold on, let me finish. And then, with that, the, there's no fish in the, in the creek, in that Valencia Creek, but we had to put in a concrete culvert to the, to the uh, fishery biologists, you know, the resource agency, so, so it's there. So eventually we'll go downstream and clear out, you know, any, any encumbrances with the fish. But, you know, it's, it's more money, more time, more effort, and the school wants to reopen in August. So, so I know that we're going to put a temporary bridge out there shortly, and uh, we're still dealing with the utilities a little bit, but that project's been underway for a while. Um, the kids had to be relocated out of that school. We went to three different locations. But anyway, it's, there's a, I can honestly say every site that we have, every 220 plus sites we have, they're all different. And everyone has to have a special design or you know or design build type of uh, process. Are you saying the fish are blocked downstream? Yeah, we, we're putting a nice fish passage block. I and mean, we've done a lot of those, but yeah. you know that's that's yeah. life in today's you know world. <laughs> this was at Swanton Road. This is a FEMA road, and gosh, I wish we turned this into an FHWA um, uh, um, supervisor uh, Ryan Coonerby has been working with us on this and again this is a culvert failure and it's a fish passage area so we're going to do a lot of permitting and it's a fema fund it's funded cow oes so it's going to take some time to do it but uh, so we're working on it but again it's, it's a process that you know to get through these these agencies is tough 220 sites you can't are, do them all are these year. culverts like all of the same age or is it is it an age <clears throat> thing or was it just it's, the volume of the rain kind of thing there, there are some that were aged, and, and we get, we're getting denied on those. And we recognize that, you know, we told them that these are aged. This is not an aged thing. This, this is, this was a good culvert that just simply washed out. Um, one of the, one of the worst things folks can do is roll a big log down into the streams, which gets caught and then washes down into the culvert and it, it blows it out. That's, that's very really common. So I've seen that happen a few different times. I don't know what happened here except, you know, this culvert was overwhelmed. When you get 10 inches of rain all the time overnight that's that's a lot of rain you carry you can't you can't do it and with the maintenance that we've had lately which has not been great because we have no staff no money it's been really hard to keep up we only have seven people to take care of north county seven people on the road crew we used to have two crews so that the, the gas tax that's really what does, does take care of it? take care of mowing ditch cleaning mm -hmm. fixing culverts paving the roads chip sealing the roads all that stuff we used to have the crews that go out and do the chip sales, and you've probably seen them out there five, seven years ago. We don't have that anymore. We can't, we can't afford the crews, we can't. We don't have a big enough crew to do those type of projects anymore. Did you just say there's only seven men? Seven men, and we're, and we're growing again. I'm gonna to get to the finances here. The good news, I'll get to it. So, we're Swanton Road. <laughs> okay, this was, uh, this is on, the embankment side. This is this is the Paul River, but the Paul River sits over here. This is the flooded field of um, one of the farmers out there, and this is one of those ones where we had to go out there and rip rap during the winter time to, to keep the levee from flooding anymore. Um, this is a big job. Uh, Grand Rock came in and saved us on this one, but uh, and then we pumped this field out. So um, associated with um, Martin County family, so. Um, We've been going back and forth with them. But I think the farmer did some stuff here that we're not quite sure what happened, but somehow we had piping underneath the levee it came back up and it just flooded this field out. So we're always concerned about, so we had guys out there 24 hours a day watching these, uh, monitoring the flows, whenever we had a big storm come through and verifying that the levees were safe. This was not one of those conditions. Then um, this is on the uh, Salsa Quays, which is, Watsonville sits over here. We had a lot of erosion occurred. So again, Grand Rock came in and did a lot of work for us. Put a lot of riprap in like this so we can stabilize the levees. And this is this is a re newly restored levee that we did probably about three years ago. 
and it really sucks to have you know this type of thing happen to us. So, but it's, um, it's tremendous flows. I've never seen anything like this. Okay, this is oh, this is a good one. <laughs> we have two two force mains grab. Uh, sewer force mains on one side and one gravity sewer on this side. And this is State Park's property. And um, they, had a, they had a culvert failure that's, that's come in from um, Seascape area. And it gave out and the culvert was so old that um, you know we, we, we looked at it and said, they're not gonna fix it, we're gonna lose our sewer lines, I'm gonna lose sewer lines to Rio de Mar and Seascape. So we went ahead and did a project here. Um, and, and uh, saved them. We replaced all this culvert. We are going to submit it for a FEMA reimbursement. I hope we get it because it, it was a it was a very expensive project. It's not, you guys are not paying for it. The sanitation district is right now. If you live in Live Oak or Rio Mar, but anyway, we're going to seek uh, reimbursement from FEMA. Um, again, that's that's the whole. And then they had to extend the pipes and stuff. So it was it was really um, a tough one to, to see. That happened earlier. Yeah, it was like the first or second storm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you go down to uh, Sea Cliff or Sea Cliff State Beach, below that, they have a big hole in their parking lot. That's also theirs. But we called them and said, "Can you help us? You know, this is your property. No, we have no money. Oh God, we're gonna lose our sewer line." So we had to take action on it. I've never written. I've never approved so many emergency projects in my life. Was, like I said, 13, 15 million dollars worth. This is prior to the board's approval. Now I'm, you know, I'm saying, "Go, go. We gotta get these roads open." fix these sites. Okay, we have some roads that may remain closed indefinitely. Um, we recognize that there's longer commutes on Highway 17. My son is starting Highway 17, starting to commute over the hill, new job this Monday. Uh, we have a tremendous amount of issues with the permitting agencies. That's always hard. They're, they're, um, uh, they can be quite tough on us. And then, um, folks, it's gonna take five, six years to put all this back together. I mean, we don't have, the good thing is we have resources that are going to build up over the next five to six years, so we'll get there. And um, private, this is what you guys were talking about, private CSA roads were impacted. And I'll tell you, the CSA people are, are very thankful. And you know, if I lived in this county and was on a private road, I would definitely join a CSA. Only because I've seen what can happen up there. When, when there's this little CSA that's going to put out $1,000 each month, or I don't know how many years, to rebuild the bridge that they lost, that's a lot of that's a lot of change for them. Um, anyway, what does CSA stand for? I'm sorry, it's County Service Areas, and we work with them to set those County Service Areas up. I got a good group of people that works with folks, and we go through LAFCO. We set up the you know the in fact, Rodney may even do this. You know, do engineers report on these roads. Figure out who's going to pay the most. Whoever lives lives at the end, who plays the least who lives at the beginning of the road, but it, it really will save you, and I've seen it happen in the past. Okay, part of my, um, part of our lobbying efforts out in the county, <laughs> we sent a bunch of postcards up to our state legislators, and, <laughs> and it was, it was, was it before the transportation bill? Yeah, oh, it was very effective. Yeah. We sent it to all the legislators, then we sent it to Fix Our, Fix Our Road group, and, um, I got a call from uh, a couple people who a couple of state associate counties that they're laughing. Sorry, we love these things. This is the best thing, you know. Yeah, you so, so, uh, and and it says from beautiful Santa Cruz County, and inside it says, "Good luck getting here." <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it was really effective. This, this is better than me calling all 58 directors. I said, "Get off your get off your rears and go work with your legislators to get support for SB1, which is." The gas tax legislation. So, um, more. This is obviously Bear Creek. Yeah, that's Glenwood Drive. Glenwood. Yeah, that's ours. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that's opening. But, but I, I, I live right on the other side, oh. and I, but I was going down to the creek level, and I took pictures every day as they rebuilt it. And it was occasionally they would pull resources away yeah. to other projects like 17 when it was all crashing and burning. Was it Red Rock that did that, or you know? Yeah, it was Red okay. Rock. Yeah, I was amazed. At the amount of equipment that they got countywide, I assume they pulled it from other areas. Well, they're they're a big company. They get you know outside of uh, Watsonville. Yeah, they're fairly large. 
but they're, they're great to work with. They're doing the Twin Lakes project right now as well. They're in Granite Rock? Yeah, Granite Rock. And, and Granite Construction is good too. We, we use all the locals. I'll, I'll show you all the locals that we utilize to this. But, you know. Um, Can I show you a question about that last one? Oh. The, that's quite a picture. Oh, yeah. What makes a road buckle like that? It's, it's probably the whole mass of material came down and just lifted it up. And then there's well, a hill on the side. You brought me no more. In, in this one, this, this retaining wall, it failed. It pushed out because the old system, they just used to fill it with dirt. But now they added these cross beams and then they backfilled it with drain rock. And so now instead of, <coughs> it's kind of a different approach. Instead of trying to make something that's really hard and hold everything together, now they just let the water flow through it yeah. into the creek. And so you don't have all that hydrostatic pressure building up, which blew that wall out. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, it's water is a tremendous weight and when it puts on to our roads and I, I got some pictures of that. This guy went down to the store and the time he came back early morning he drops into a hole and it's like, oh God. He was going 30 minutes. Yeah, 30 yeah. minutes. Do you know about it? Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. We just crushed the van and filled it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make good All right, this is in Boulder Creek, and it, I, I really admire the humor with the Christmas tree here. <laughs> so, you know, I actually saw from, one from uh, Oregon where they put a little pot plant for potholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make so money for us or something like that. So, so it's, um, yeah, we, we recognize, uh, I think we put, after all these storms, we put a million dollars into the contractor's hands to fix a lot of potholes. We have not been able to get to them. And, and that was a lot of money outlay that we did not have, but we knew we had a massive amount of potholes out there. So uh, we didn't get to everything. We're still trying, but um, there's a lot of effort there to, to, to make the roads better, at least temporary. Okay, typical uh, what happens. This is a this is a you know a slope here, and you know, water gets into a crack, and there's a shear plane here that just it resists that that movement, and I'll show you the next slide, um, the weight, and we lose our uh, shear strength here, and that thing just goes bam, out it goes, and it's, it's so common. What I really want to do at some point, if I ever had time, is to put weeping holes back in some of these areas. We just don't have the resources. Can I pivot? Yeah, well, they're, 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 you'll see them on Highway 1, South County, but um, they literally just suck the water out of these mountainous <coughs> areas. And you, you hook them up and you drain them out so you don't get this type of situation. If we have resources, you know, that's where I would go. But, you know, this, this thing just rotates around. It's, it's pretty common. Um, you know, or it just gets saturated, just sloughs off, trees come down, everything. What kind of walls was it? Pardon? What kind of holes did you say you put in there? Like weep, weep. Weep holes. They're, they're like weep. tubes that go back into the mountain and then weep pick holes? up. Yeah, like weep, weep drains or something like that. I don't know if that's a correct term, but it's literally you, you, you suck the water out of these areas. Yeah. You know, that's, um, you I would like to do that about a thousand sites out there. You put pipes back pipes in there. Exactly. Yep. And allow the water into the pipe and mm -hmm. like French drains. Well, yep. You also put a drainage network at the bottom of that if you want to be <clears throat> Yeah, it, um, exactly. Um, the other thing is it'd be nice just to have decent drainage along our roadways, you know, and that's something we're going to work on. This is kind of typical. I've, I threw this in here because this is kind of like Soquel Sunday Road. You got you got the road up here and, and it slipped out underneath, and you got a creek down here. Um, it's it's this is the big massive slide here, you know, all the way around. It, it's um, again, it's just I just threw it in because I thought it was interesting. Yes. Is there a map that exists for someone who's mapped out known ancient landslides in the Kennex? Probably the, the geotech engineers in uh, county planning will have that. You can, so, you can, when houses go through escrow now, mm -hmm. a map comes with the escrow papers, and, and there is a map if you go into the GIS system where you can look up and pink areas are slides. We know because we live on the ancient slide. Uh, but the geotech from things Well, the word well, ancient is, is very ambiguous. Is this 100,000 years old and it's sort of historical interest? There's something that happened 100 years ago and we need to be really worried about it, but you can't tell. Yeah, you can't tell. And apparently this was done in the 70s, maybe? And it was an aerial 
depiction of what they thought were the slides. Yeah, they got the. Uh, they have a new um, radar system that you can now kind of see that more visible. It's LIDAR, radar, and um, you know, someday like to fly the county, not necessarily to radiate everybody, but to actually know what's going on out there. Okay. Um, yeah, just, just if you walk your property, if you have redwoods, redwoods grow perfectly straight. But if you see them take a little, a little, little jog, yeah, you, you can kind of walk out, you can map out your, your, your yeah. scarves. Okay, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about typical walls. Um, this is a soldier pile wall. I call it a pier and lagging walls. Essentially, it's I-beams that go down into the soil. They're pretty deep. And these are tiebacks that go back underneath the mountain. And they're tensioned down. That's why they've got the big bolts. Some of them have big bolts on them. We do these. These are our, our most practical walls when we're really worried about the situation. Um, and it has wood wood across here that slipped down in the I-beams. And uh, we do a lot of these. You know, that's, that's very common. Um, What's the life expectancy for something like that? It could be 100 years. And then you, mm -hmm. the other thing is you can pull these beams, these uh, wood beams out and put new ones in. They're, they're, they last a long time. And, they, and it has really good drainage behind it. I see a lot of private um, walls that fail because they didn't put adequate drainage behind it. So, you know, the other thing is you got to have a really good base down here. So this is a concrete <coughs> platform they build off of. Oh, there's this expansion bolt type thing that you push in and then it just push, pushes out? It, it tightens up. It actually compresses. Uh, it, 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 so it compresses back into the mountain. So, and you put a lot of them in. We did one, we did one off of Highway 17 one time, um, El Rancho, I think, road. And it's right next to the highway. So as we were, as we were putting them, the contractor was putting us a contractor, putting the beams of the tie backs in, he's, they were gunnited in. And the gunite, we didn't rec we didn't realize that it was a lot of rock structure under Highway 17, because we thought we were going to hold the 17. <laughs> we're working with Caltrans. The gunite went straight down into the ground, right out to Carbonara Creek and killed fish. And went, oh my god. <gasps> so um, you don't you don't know always what's going on. So we're really careful when we go back and gunite these things in uh, to make sure that there's nothing coming out. There's no way we could have known because um, the brush that went below Highway 7 down to the creek, you would never know. We only had one guy march down there, and this is like 15 years ago, so it doesn't really matter anymore. I see the <laughs> reporter over there. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> Maybe 20, 25 years ago. But anyway, so, so we, we dealt with the resource agency. We, we paid her fine, or the contractor paid us fine. And, and, um, and that's, what's, that's why 17 is still there today. Just, just outside, just going outside of Santa Cruz. And, you know, in the, in the El Rancho area. So we saved that road for Caltrans. So, um, let's see. Oh, okay, typical plans and specs. Each, each site is its own unique site, you know, and some of the design, you can see these are the tie backs, or the, um, these are the high beams that go down, and then the tie backs come in here, so. Oh, actually, this is, this is the, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's kind of your typical design. I don't do design work anymore. They don't let me do it. <laughs> Tell me about the depth. Do they go looking for something, or do they just go down some distance? Yeah. They, no, we have it all geotechnical engineers. So we have geologists out there. They do a lot of soil samples. Rock or, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh yeah, and what where the water is and what type of soil it is. So again, I haven't done design work in 20 years. So I depend on really good design consultants like. Rodney back here. Yeah, we usually go at least 10 feet into bedrock at the bottom. So some Is of these get, like? yeah, some of these get 50 feet long. Some of these beams. I, I yeah. Again, here's here's the <coughs> I, I beams coming in and you know the wood. Um, wait, typical. What, what do you mean by bedrock? Could it be clay? Could it be this? this we want we want hard material. Like granite yeah. or or well, well it's like, it's 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 clay it's considered it's bedrock. It's a lot of very small. Prisma, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and literally, you want to get into hard, hardscape, you know, down there. But um, you, you know, if you don't find it, you're going to go deeper with that, with that I beam down. And then there's concrete around that I beam, so, so it's it's uh, it's really pretty structurally sound. I, I'm sure that Bear Creek Road has got to be really tough because that drop off goes straight to the creek. It's about 50 feet down. That's an ugly project. It that's is. that's a, probably a three and a half million dollar project that we're looking at. Yeah. Um, let's see. Moving very fast. There it goes. Again, it's 
the I beams, and, and then here's the tie backs coming in here, anchored in underneath the, the road and back into the mountainside. So that looks like a 30 degree angle. Is that optimum? It, it depends on what the geotech tells us. You know, I don't, again, yeah. Just, just, just consider him. Yeah. Just a little slow on this thing. Yeah. Uh, soldier pile, the tie back. And, you know, that was, this is the plans to that, that original picture I showed you with the. Okay. Um, come on. Oh, we do, I just want to let you know, we do, we do a very elaborate landscaping below it where we have exposed soil. So you'll see that we have a, um, an arborist on, on, on staff that does this uh, typical, typical design here. So we hope to have it fully you know, grown out in a year or two. This next image, that, that looks like Glenwood Drive. That's how they, how they did ours. You know, this is, these are typical. Our crews used to do a lot of these, and we, had a, we, had a, we poured this concrete in place. They're just like um, you know, tinker toys you put together and build a wall. You really need a stable situation here. Um, you know, what is that concrete. city? Or just soil? No, it's got to be hard. It's got to be either concrete footing or it's going to be rock. So you've got to have a stable situation. We lost, I think, one or two of these this year because it was just old, and the drainage probably just gave out over so many years. We probably have a thousand of these out there on, on the county roads. Pieces, you can't even see them. Yeah, they're they're well overgrown. Yeah. This is the base for our road. Yeah. Concrete crib, so oh, yeah. they're, they're going to set it on that. That's right. Yep. So again, just, just plans. I, I threw these in here. I'm not sure if you're interested. Um, this is the same. This is a project for that crib wall. Again, I wish we could just say this all works for one, one place, but each and every site has a distinct geotech. What's going on, you know, <coughs> what type of soil conditions, what type of bedrock you have. And Rodney knows more than I do because he's a structural, works in structural stuff, but um, you know, we, we depend on those folks and my staff to do this type of work. Okay, this is a stitch pile cast in place design uh, drilled hole. It's a drilled hole. So um, big concrete piers that come down here. And I think we save both sides of this road. Lots of drainage under these things. Always a lots of drainage. You, know, you need to get a new picture. This, those piers are frozen up down to 12 feet. Did they, did they get exposed? Uh, we have to go yeah, back. The, the road works, but it, the piers are seriously. It's still there, though. It's good. Yeah, the road's Because this is, yeah. That so we'll get to that. That's good to know. Um, Redwood Lodge, yeah. It's good to know. Well, that brings up another point. Is Are there citizens that are trained to kind of keep an eye on these culverts and things, they kind of walk the road during these storms? Yeah, we got a lot of assistance this year uh, from a lot of folks when they say, hey, my road's starting to go. Um, where was I? I got, I got a couple calls in around the middle of the night to look at roads and, you know, closed roads or whatever. Um, yeah, we do. We depend on a lot of citizens. We, we go into um, the 911 center, which is off of SoCal Avenue, the sheriff's facility, the new sheriff's facility. Uh, we have an emergency operating center there. So that goes open 24 hours a day. We're monitoring creeks, rivers, and all the road conditions. And we're, it's, it's chaotic, you know, all through the night, all through the next day. And we also, at Bromer Yard, we have a facility that's also open with emergency. So we, we were getting so many calls. We had three people that were working phones at one time, just trying to catch all the calls. It was busy. When you have 67 roads closed in one weekend, that's a lot of roads. That's, that's an incredible amount of work to, to Try. And the crews were running anywhere from 12 to 36 hours, you know, in, in work. They're literally we were dogging it, you know, because they're so tired. But um, you know, we had to send them home. You can't work anymore. You work too much. So it was it was an incredible year. Yes, that's all I can say. It's just incredible. Well, well, the bridge, bridge, the bridge on in Big Sur, there were some hikers that saw the cracks at the base. Is that correct? Probably it's called the oh, you know, underneath the bridge. Yeah, it was that big slide underneath the bridge to take out those those piles or the, the footings. It appears, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's something else. On Kings Creek, we had neighbors keep the, the paved part open because the county was off in other places. So yeah. The tractors and stuff came down and clearing slides and filling potholes. And so that's, I mean, that's a funny story here. Um, <laughs> I got to tell us, and it's, it's um, being the president of the county engineers, they have this little award that they like to give for stupid stuff, you know? And um, 
they, they went and researched on me and they said, oh, you have vigilantes out there filling potholes. And I said, <laughs> yes, we have vigilantes out there filling potholes. Yes, we want, and they're mostly up in North County. And we actually left the asphalt. Well, they picked up on that. And so, so then they said, uh, well, you had a, you kind of built a, you had a spill or you had some construction problems at our Lode Street Sanitation, off of Lode Street, off of Portola Drive. 26th Avenue, and so they nailed me this year, and I was one of the, I've been nailed like four times, but I never got the actual award. And I, I kind of, it's it's a big glass box, you know, and it's got all the public works directors have gotten in the past, and assistant public works directors, but mostly public works directors. And I, I was looking at it, 30 years ago, it was Don Porath, who was the public works director for Santa Cruz County. And I never got to meet Don, and I heard he was a tough old turkey, and he's a good guy, but he worked hard. Um, but 30 years later, guess who got it? I did. <laughs> so if you feel like you want to come down, like, like it's the Giants, you know, you know, they have the nice, you know, baseball award. If you want to come down and touch it, you're more than come down and touch it. <laughs> it's a glass box with a big old buffalo turd in it and some plastic <laughs> flowers. So I, I'm going to give it up this next March, and I hope to give it to someone who really deserves it more than I do. <laughs> so, this was, well, are you saying that vigilantes were helped? Absolutely. Yeah, they wore they wore the proper gear. They had the hard hats. They had the orange vest. And they had the stop signs. So uh, I don't know who gave it to them. I don't even want to know who gave them all the equipment. But we were happy to leave some asphalt and disappeared. We're good with that. <laughs> yeah. We we were really just speaking of potholes. We we have been trying to research what is the best pothole mix out there and just something that will actually stay there, you know, beyond, you know, the next storm. And they, we can't find it. Everybody claims, well, I have the best product, and they show up, and you know what? Look, it came up again. So we're still searching it out. Uh, what is the best product to put in these potholes? Ideally, you want to cut them out, dig them out, and recompact it and put new asphalt down. But it's it's a very expensive process. Like I said, we spent a million dollars on, on contractors to fill a lot of potholes. They were deep. You know, they were very deep. Um, again, this is, you know, this is this project and you can see concrete cross. We had uh, piers on both sides to protect this road. So I will, I will bring it up to our staff to go out and take a look at it if you say the piers are exposed. So a lot of effort goes into these, these designs. Um, then the permitting is just incredible. You know, it's just, it's just resources agencies means the regional board, the you know, Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, NOAA fisheries, you know, so it just goes on. Fish and wildlife, fish and both fish and wildlife, state and federal. So it's just a lot of effort to get through those. And what I've been trying to do is work with our CO and say, hey, we need bodies this year. We need bodies to do 220 projects over the next five or six years. I do have some retirements. I'm hoping to steal whoever I can out of the local engineering firms. Um, but we need bodies to help with managing the, the consultants and actually doing design work. Um, there's just so much involved. Then once you get into construction, then it gets really tough because something goes wrong. Say, I didn't see there's a big rock out there and you gotta remove it. Well, that's a million dollars. No, we're not gonna pay you a million dollars. Blow the thing up or get it out of there. But right now we're dealing with some issues on the Twin Lakes project down by the crow's nest. We're, we're stalled because um, we're not, uh, Granite Rock is a, the contractor and they're saying, we don't like the design. And I, I agree with them we may do a major change order to get that project going again. So there's always a lot of issues. So our engineers are working from the beginning all the way to the end of the project. So, and I only have a few engineers working on roads. Most of our engineers are sanitation engineers in the county public works. So um, we're trying to add to those staff. We're trying to bring on four new engineers. To work on these. Okay, just concrete stuff. It's really hard to see that back there, but a lot of, like I said, if you build a wall, put a lot of drainage in it, protect it. Uh, get into the money situation here. Okay. Oh, recent fun one. There you go. Yeah, there you right. go. Sure. Yeah, crib wall. Um, rock pile, rock slope protection mm -hmm. with um, Mount Charlie Road. Is Either. there a road at the top of it? Uh, no. No. Okay. no. I think that's just cheating. I'm not sure what that is. Cheating, I think. I, I can't get on the field like I used to, so uh, that's probably just cheating right now. Is that metal? No, I, I think it's probably black plastic sheeting or something like that. That's just got reflected. Yeah, kind of 
slope protection. You know, the other thing, it could be um, they're going to they're gonna, uh, vegetate that, so that could be just a liner there. Eventually they'll vegetate it. We don't like exposed areas. You know, we want to cover them up with some plants. Um, okay. I also, part of my responsibility is I'm on, I'm on the National Committee of uh, County Engineers, and I work, I, I, I volunteer through the emergency committees, and so I did a presentation back in Cincinnati uh, about two months ago, and what I, what I found is all these folks we generally work with, if we have a major emergency, all the amateur radio, sheriffs, and Santa Cruz County animal, animal shelter. I cannot tell you how many animals were relocated due to fires or other things. Uh, Red Rover is good. They, they also work with animals. So uh, different groups, uh, California Conservation Corps, Red Cross. So typical, typical people we contact to work with. Then um, here's what we're doing right now. And, we hired five big firms. We're going to hire local firms as well. Five big firms are taking on like you know 15 projects at one time. They have the capacity to do that. It's uh, one million dollars each initially, and we'll probably go up. And this is the reason we hired consultants is because we get better reimbursement uh, and we get the jobs done faster. So, so the projects that we're doing right now are the ones that are going to be done um, quick, most quickly. We're not doing full formal engineering doing design build, going at it. Um, most of these projects from here on out are gonna be permitted uh, through the resource agency, design, bid, and constructed. And it's, that's why it's gonna take some time to rebuild. Um, we're gonna, we're putting a lot of money into this, um, you know, into these consultants. Okay, uh, okay, we did about 13, I think it's probably $15 million of just reopening roads, moving the material around, moving off the road, relocating it. Um, Powell River was 900,000, State Park was 900,000, and we need about 22 million over the next five to six years to, for the local match for FEMA and FHWA. Good news is I think we have it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna get to that. Um, we worked really hard to bring that money in. So, um, anyway, so we're about 13, 15 million dollars that we're gonna eventually get reimbursed on. Okay, these are the general contractors and others, tree companies, everybody that helped us during this event. Um, this is the first page. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we have another page here. When so, you say they helped you, what do you mean? I mean, like right now, he's, he's under construction with Valencia Road. Um, undergrounding tree service, they're moving trees off the roads. I mean, you're paying them to do that. Yes, we're paying. They're not volunteers. We're, we're yeah. actually paying Kittleson yeah. Environmental, you know, fish passage. They plus so. saved uh, King's Creek Road, the uh, gravel part of it. They did a French drain. It has the whole road that was sinking. They came and did an amazing job. A lot of tree service, too, you know. So, um, signage company, paving companies, geology companies. Let's go back to this one. Earthworks, good friends of mine, Air Pacific. So, all these guys, they're all out there working for us. But like I said, a lot of tree service. I, those guys are amazing. When you have big redwoods just sitting out there, sitting on a you know a power line or sitting in the middle of the road, they're amazing. Yes. Lewis know. is wonderful. Huh? Lewis? Lewis is yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Power Bassoon to Geotech. Uh, we United Rentals, we, we rented a lot of equipment. Bowman and Williams. How come you're not on here, Rodney? I don't know, John. Oh geez. We gotta get you on here, dude. <laughs> All right, um, here's the good news. Um, things are happening now. Um, Measure D, you vote, if you folks voted for it, thank you, thank you, thank you. That brings in $2.6 million. We have grants on average, we get about $2 million every year, every other year. And those grants, we're traditionally using them for storm damage. We want to move this over to pavement management, like this. Once, uh, we're going to just use a little bit of Measure D this year, but most of this is going in new paving and you know, research in the roads. We have a five-year plan. Transportation fee, we're working on that. That, that will ultimately bring in 1.4 million. But this is the kicker right here. This is the one that we work so hard at the legislature. And I know you're gonna pay more at the gas pump, but I'm telling you, California was broken when it came to taking care of its roads. It was completely broken. Could, could you confirm that climb to 10 million? We haven't been able to get any firm numbers now that it's passed. Yeah. 
What, what I, I, have a, I have a document I got from uh, California State Association of Counties. It's 1.8 million the first year, and that's what we're seeing now. It goes to 4.4, it goes to 6.3, it goes to 7 point something, it goes to 8, and by 7, 8 years out, it's 10 million. So It's 10, it's 10 year term? Uh, I, yeah, unless they do something different, but you know, it's, it's, it's um, what was it, 5.2 billion over 10 years. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's climbing because they're raising the tax each year. Yeah, they're they're also you're going to see some hits on your DMV registration, and yeah, and, and let, you know if you have an expensive car, you're going to pay a little more than say you have a fifty dollar car. So uh, you call them opportunities to contribute. How, how do you uh, accommodate for hybrids and electric cars? And you know, it yeah. seems it well, seems like it's a diminishing return. You betcha. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what's happening. The the. They're, they're actually going to start in 2020 is when they're going to put a registration fee, a $100 fee plus the registration fee on to electric vehicles. So all those Tesla drivers and Prius drivers, they're not paying anything for roads right now. They're not, and they're going to use the HOV lanes. So, so we did look at, you know, this is a half cent sales tax here. We looked at doing a quarter cent and would have brought in another 2.6 million. We, we decided not to do it, it didn't pull well. So this is the kind of what I'm working on now with the, a with the, uh, public works director down in Santa Barbara County, is we're gonna go back to Washington and say, you know, we don't need money for big projects, we need money for maintenance purposes to, to repair roads. We were, we were talking about across the United States, everybody needs maintenance money, except for Oregon, they have a, whatever reason, they got great roads up there. Um, Washington, excuse me, Washington, not Oregon, Washington. Um, so this is, you know, I worked on this a lot. I, I spent a lot of time working with uh, uh, both the legislators and also with the uh, County Engineers Association, all the public works directors to get, to get active and, and advocate for this because honestly, it was broken in California. We weren't seeing any resources come in. When LA County, the biggest, most richest county in the state of California, is giving back grants because they can't afford the local match, there's a problem in California. There's a significant problem with how we're financing the roads. So I, I know I'm paying more for gas tax, and everybody else will, but honestly, if you go back to 1994, it's probably equivalent to what you were paying in 1994 because you were paying 36 cents a gallon, I believe, back then. Now they're talking at the federal level whether or not they're going to put a gas tax on there. So, it's it's it may not be the perfect way, and there is a diminishing return on this. So there is there is a long term outlook to look at you know mileage base you know and, and whoever weight. drives the most is going to pay the and, most and weight and and weight yeah miles and weight miles. yeah light cars don't hurt the roads as much as these big SUVs or you know, eight thousand <coughs> trucks trucks do tremendous damage. Uh, one question: We said you have a the five year plan for Measure D. Is that um, it's it's roughly yeah, we do. Um, it's mostly local streets, but it's, it's always evolving. And the five-year plan that we did for resurfacing was tied to Measure D. But what we're now seeing is this is going to grow. That five-year plan may become a two-and-a-half-year plan or three-year plan. So we're, we're actually trying to accelerate that uh, a bit. So this is, this, is, this is the most significant thing that ever, I've ever seen in, in yeah. County Public Works. Yeah, could you talk about uh, State SB1? That 10 million, does that apply to the same local rural roads that the 2.6 million up above does? Yes. So most of the state funds are going to local roads. Is that true? No. The, the, way, uh, <laughs> the, way, the way the current gas situation before, before SB1, 64% um, went to Caltrans, 36% went to um, the local agencies. That's all the cities and counties. Good. 80% of the roads in California are owned by local agencies. So Caltrans was getting this chunk of change for 10% of the roads. The other 10% are private roads. So Caltrans, they're bloated. I hate to say it, but they get a tremendous amount of money. Um, local agencies, they often have you know, a sales tax or they get money from general fund and things like that to, to supply, mostly in cities. Some counties get, get also general fund monies. But um, so this time around, SB1, it splits at 50-50. 50% goes to local agencies, 50% goes to Caltrans. 
There's also a greater percentage goes to LA, you know, like the LA, Southern California counties. They get a little higher percentage. The way gas tax is distributed is based on how many mile or how many roach miles you have and how many vehicles are registered in your county. This county doesn't have, I hate to say it, it doesn't have enough registered vehicles compared to Contra Costa County US. They get three times the gas tax as us, but they have the same road mileage. To me, that's that's totally unfair the way they look at it. So a lot of rural counties, mostly Northern California, are not happy with the way the gas tax is distributed. When LA County gets, they have 3,000 miles, they get $190 million, you know, I get, I, I'm going to climb to 10 million, you know, sure. with when I got probably, you know, one fifth of the miles, I, I don't get 190 million, I should get 25 million for our roads. So I can tell you, Humboldt County, Stanislaus County, you know, just Trinity County, uh, Shasta County, all these counties that have smaller populations, a lot of road miles are just getting killed on this. And that's why your payments are so bad in a lot of these counties, because they just don't have the money. Um, very, you know, this, this is huge, this measure D. E. I wish we had more, and this is huge to well, that's us. That's why we did it. Huh? We did measure D e to get state bill number one, and we're doing it for the federal thing, too. Here's the good news, is measure D e opens up I think it's around $400 million of grants that whoever has a sales tax measure in, in uh, California can seek additional money. That's what we're going after besides this. So we hope to build you know, through the grant program. This is also huge if we can ever get to that <coughs> point in Washington. Federal, where's federal? Oh, yeah. The federal, yeah. It's kind of, kind of a little bit loosey-goosey back there right now. So. <laughs> so, is there any grant money for private roads? We looked at that. All we can do is work with you, uh, with the banks. Yeah, there is not though. I mean, that's why I, I would strongly encourage you to get into a CSA and build that, build those resources up for yourself. Those private roads, but there is not. And we, we tried to get, you know, FEMA looked at, they're not, they're not gonna fund private roads. That's why we want you to become a CSA so you're protected with an insurance policy. Yes. Does this money go for the matching money then that the federal government puts in that what, 75%? Yeah, we'll, we're going to use this money and, and this money, a little bit of this money, and the rest of it goes to paving for the match this year. We hope to just build more of this off the match, because this goes to 4.4 million the second year and then six. So, boy, it just like accelerates up. And, you know, for the first time, I have some positive feelings about what we can do out in, in our roadway system. So, um, you going to share that? Finances with us a little later. Um, I, I can put it. You know, I'm I'm doing a presentation in front of the board on my the public works presentation for the budget, and it will be in that in that um, PowerPoint. I can put it. I'll have a. I'll put it on the website. We're, CSAC. It's it's kind of like um, they're not entirely sure, but this is what their best guess is. So don't hold these numbers as being firm. But I can put that on the website. Um, I'll do that plus this PowerPoint. I'll try and get my staff to do that, my does, secretary to do that. The CSAs require 100% buy-in by all the landowners? I think it's, I think it's a majority. Uh, majority? Um, just yeah, a majority? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. you, you, and you know, it's, it's better, sometimes it's better to have that just in place as opposed to trying to collect money every year for your road maintenance mm -hmm. as a private. Mm -hmm. And that's, I, I've been through those discussions with a lot of different private roads. It's, it's tough. Okay, rebuilding county roads, um, five, six years at, at the minimum, you know. Uh, we, we will be using Measure D, a, a small portion of it. We promise to use Measure D for resurgence, but we, we really do need to rebuild our roads. Um, work split between FHWA, FEMA, Cal OES, and FHWA roads are well underway, as you can see, Glenwood, and Bear Creek is gonna happen, and Valencia, and SoCal Drive, and some of the other major roads. We've, we've restored a few roads already, probably three to four already, and design built type concept. So get the contractor out there and get, what are you gonna do? Well, let's, let's do this, and they do it. You know, they're on it. Would you tell what FHWA oh, stands for? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, FEMA is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Oh, okay. FEMA, and Cal OES is the California Operation, or Office of Emergency Services. Then FHWA is the Federal Highway Administration. So FEMA's on this, FEMA's on this side, FHWA, Caltrans is on this side. We work through Caltrans on most of our stuff through FHWA. 
and they're awesome to work with. You know, there's clearly yeah, FEMA, we just haven't got there yet, and we will get there with them, and they're gonna be fine to work with. Okay, so they'll be fine. Okay, so I got through this and joke. Um, yeah, this is, sorry. So, <laughs> so, I, I, had, I saw that on the staff's wall. I said, oh, I gotta put this in the presentation. Yeah. Yeah. You'll see this in my board presentation too. I, I gotta have a little laugh. And, you, have, you have to have a little humor. I mean, this has been a brutal year, extraordinary brutal year for us. And, and, and I tell you, there's a bit of us who are shell shocked with what happened out there. And we have some optimism now with the resources coming in. And we will get to these roads. We will get to these roads. And just give us some time, be patient, but we will. If you have any questions, call us. Send us an email anytime. We try to get back to everybody. I, I know I owe oh, a week ago, I know someone up on uh, Char Mount Charlie Road a, a response. I just haven't got to it. Um, but, you know, call us. Say, where are we on these roads? The other thing on our website, we have pretty much listed all the sites. And, you know, when we started off, it was like, oh, we got $25 million worth of damage. That's, oh, that's bad. And then 50, 60, 80, 70. 95 and it goes over 114 million dollars we were at one time thinking we could put every road on on our website and say where are we on it we hope to get to it honest to god we hope to have some idea of where we are on those roads so people can say you actually are working on roads we are working on your roads it's going to take time though we've never ever ever have seen anything like this in this county skyline got yes yes how come it got fixed so fast uh, it's yeah, it's a main thoroughfare, and um, we had to, we had, we're trying to open up these roads that's, that are bypasses to 17, and that's why we're working on Bear Creek and SoCal San Jose Road as well. We, we had to, we basically had to let Caltrans and FHWA let them know that these are critically important roads to this community. When 17 goes down, these are our access roads into the county. Um, that's why these roads are opening up faster. And they're, they're doing design build, which we just, on the cuff, on the field, we design it and we build it. Um, everything else is gonna take some time. Yes, in the back. What do you recommend in a situation where there's a slope, like in that picture on the left side, there's trees on top, but the dirt underneath has fallen away. So it's very, there's nothing underneath the trees. So it's a very unstable, precarious situation. Those trees will come down. Um, we can't go on the private property, but we, you know, I would, I, I think we would notify. If you call us, we will notify the property owner. Well, I have that situation in my property. On your property, we would probably say. Do you recommend taking down the trees? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice yeah. to take it down. If you wait, we'll, we'll, we'll scrape it off the road for you. But, well, it's a private road. I would, I would say you want to do that. I would call one of the tree services and have some situations, it. thousands of dollars, especially if you're, if you're a boat. Yeah. You've got you you lines, you've got giant uh, stumps coming down. This is, could be five, ten thousand dollars We, wow. we looked at I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, what we could do along all our county roads, and we would be taking out so many trees. Part of the beauty of Santa Cruz is to have these trees lying along the roads. But you look at some of them, we do remove the ones that are, are precarious. Um, well, it's high up, and the dirt's could, gone. Could you underneath. describe precarious? Precarious is what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> all of your notes? Yeah, it's, 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 yes. And as a part of stuff is, I mean, live along a road for 16 years. I'll watch trees that are hanging there. I know it's gonna come down some year. Yep. It's there for 10 years. Yep. Finally comes down, you get out the sheets on a tractor or whatever, and you take it out. Yep. And so it, to some extent, yes, it's going to come down. Chances of you being under it, if it comes down is very low. Chance of hurting yourself taking out a tree that's yep. leaning one of the reasons they're charged so much it's dangerous. is because it's dangerous. The tree can explode as you cut it you bet. if you don't know how to do it right. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's, um, that's why we use tree service. It's safer to let it fall in some situations than it is to go and take it out, unless you're really we, you know what you're doing. We, kind of, we see trees like this, eucalyptus trees, a lot in South County and, and you know what side they're leaning. And, Sometimes they're on private property and remain on the road. 
and they keep leaning. We're going to take it down. You know, we're going to work with the property owner to take it down. If they're leaning his way, it's his responsibility on his property, you know, on towards his house. We've seen trees come down on both sides of houses this year uh, on certain conditions. So it's, it's, you know, you love the trees, but there are trees that probably need to be thinned out or removed because of the danger, the danger of them. So mm -hmm. we, we, yes, back there. Um, on the down slope, we have a tree that fell and took out a big gouge of the road. What do you recommend to remedy that situation? Because now there's a big hole. I would put in rocks the down in there. Slope. I would put some boulders in there, or or some yeah. That would probably be the best and stack them in there. You know, um, it's like a rock rock slope protection. So mm -hmm. boulders and stuff like that. That's how I do it. But half, uh, maybe a quarter or half of the lane is gone. Oh, below the road, you have a slip yeah, out. Yeah, on the down slope. Oh, like, and like the picture, this? And a, a tree fell yeah. and gouged out part of the road and took it down too. Yeah, that's that's going to probably require some type of wall, like a, like a the crib wall that I showed you with the stack pieces. You know, mm -hmm. it depends on how deep it is. Rodney right there can give you an idea. I got his card. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, we got the guy in the back. Uh, a couple of huge thank yous. First of all, to your crews out there doing the field, yeah. and also to your website staff and sccroadclosures.org, keeping that updated, which was a huge mess. One of the comment on that that a lot of the Facebook groups, including some of the closed groups like Ben Lowman and the Roads, were actually providing real-time updates, including photos of all the roads. And because some of us are residents, we were able to get into places and take a ton of pictures. And my immediate thought was, wouldn't that have been useful to you guys for damage assessment? Maybe we before the next storm season, we can set up some sort of sharing process to mm -hmm. make sure you folks are getting the photos that residents are taking, and not just you know the, the, the road surface, but the downhill and all the other stuff. We have photographed everything out there right now. Literally, um, we sent everybody out to do that. And any additional pictures, if you if you tell us what, what roads they are, where they failed, because we may have missed a few, but we think we got most of them. And um, if you want to send them to us, we'll be happy to take them. DPW with. You know, so so how do you identify where it is? Mile markers, GPS locations? Yeah, mile marker is always good, or even an address nearby is, is good. So, um, you know, we, we'll take those pictures. At one point during the height of the storm, as you guys did uh, what you call the safety stand down, and you put on your Facebook page, and the county just basically said, okay, we're done. We're going to send our crews home. We're going to get a good night's sleep. I'm sorry the road's broken. We can't fix it tonight. That's, that's I my secretary. Get your feedback saying, thank you for doing that. Thank you for valuing the safety of your workers because, yeah, the roads are important. But we don't want your people to get hurt. We had that was probably one of those wind nights and lots of saturated conditions. And, and what happened is we were following PGE around removing electrical lines so we could get the trees out of there. It got bad. There was trees coming down everywhere. That was probably the weekend of the 67 road closures. You know, 67 different sites. We said these guys are going to they're, they're going to get hurt out there. Um, um, Thank you for that because we we really debated that, uh, and my secretary said there's no way these people should be out there this this time of night, you know this or or this type of event. When the utility company shut down, we're shutting down too. It was that dangerous. They were we had guys <laughs> literally driving a road and they turn around and a mudslide comes down behind them or trees come down in front of them. And uh, on Soquel Sands Road, it's really cute. Is our, our guy was in a loader came up went up the road and he was coming back down. And a mudslide had come down, and he turns around, and these cars were right on him, you know, right on his butt, all the way to the point he couldn't even turn around. And said, "You guys can't go this way anymore." There's a massive slide on the road, so, it, it, you know, um, it, it, it's just extraordinary. That's all I'm gonna say. I hope you realize that we're gonna invest our time and effort and everything we can to make these roads better. It's it's just gonna take time. It's just gonna take time. Can we talk about that for a minute? There's two two big issues here. One is coming back from this incredible storm. Yeah. But the other one, and it's a, I think it should be a parallel issue, is we've done the voting, we've got the ballots passed. Now we're looking at a, a, a situation for us, the first time in 25, 30 years, where we can plan ahead to get the kind of roads we want and the kind of reliability from those roads. Yep. And, and I know you're busy with one, but I just want to encourage you to, that's where we're spending our time. We trust you to fix the roads. We want to get this bigger issue. And so. Squeaky wheel gets more, more attention, I'll tell you that right now. Um, 
we, I spent, um, I've, I've spoken to four board members, I gotta still meet with Greg Caput, but um, about what we're doing with the roads. We hope to, because there was no findings, I mean, there's no yeah, funds we'll that were coming in, and we were, we reduced our road crews down because we did <clears throat> just to maintain them. And we can actually say, here's what we wanna do in the next five, six years, plan out, here's the projects we wanna do to, to storm damage. Over here, this is the resurfacing projects we want to do on our county roads, and we actually want to have a plan. We, we came up with a plan for that Measure D, but this SP1 is just huge to us. I can't even tell you. This is like, yeah, it's like 30 years ago, I talked to uh, John Phantom, who was the director um, when he hired me in 1991. He, he said that we used to have so much money we didn't know what to do with, and they're mad at us because we couldn't spend it fast enough. And I'm going, Really? <laughs> really? I'm having lunch with him tomorrow. I'm going to say, really? You remember that, really? We may be in that situation where we're, we're actually going to recoup over the next five, six, seven years and, and start doing the ditch cleaning and mowing that we need to do. I mean, we had a mower, you know, those mowers that we use out there. The whole thing came unraveled and, you know, flew off and we could have hurt someone. This stuff is so old. You know, the trucks, you see the trucks, they're 92. 200,000 miles on them. You have another thing oh. that's very old. We need an update on the Red Book. We oh. need a better way for you guys to set priority than a book. Okay, so that's a good point. That's a good point. And, and there's also what's called the Capital Improvement Program, and it, it was really bad too, um, and we recognize that. When I, when I became Director of Public Works eight years ago, first thing I said, where's our Red Book for sanitation? And, or where's our capital improvement program? Uh, we don't have one. I said, okay. So I gave it to one of my secretaries and some of the engineering staff, and I said, this is what I want. This is how it lays out. It is probably one of the finest books we've ever had for sanitation. We're trying to emulate that now for roads. And, and it's going to be about that thick. But we did do a color picture of capital improvement projects this year. It's not perfect by any means, but it was the first cut this year. Eventually, we will have all five years of projects in there. And that's what I'm saying. We want to have that. Here's the here's the here's the bridge projects we're doing. Here's the capital improvement projects we're doing. And here's the storm damage project. And here's the pavement management projects. It will all be in this capital improvement pr program. Full on pictures, details, how much money it's going to cost, where we are in the project. It's going to talk. It's going to take a lot of time to invest into that. But once we get it, it's going to be fantastic to have. Now, who moves them up and down the list? Um, it, it's that the supervisor? <laughs> they can. I know. I, I spent some time with Supervisor Leopold. He's he's definitely interested in the summit area. You know, I can tell you that he's. he's no, but I mean, I'm serious. It's like yeah. the citizens need to have some. They well, we know this road a lot better than the Public Works Department knows we do. So let me let me give you kind of a little idea how you should be looking at pavement management, and and I took that out of this um, pavement is. And, and I, I take a lot of classes in pavement management. I've done a lot of pavement design over the years. But the reality is you should protect your best stuff now. You know, the stuff that's five to seven years old, you should, you should be taking care of that. Because once that fails, like a lot of these roads, it's 20 times more expensive. It's 20 times more expensive. It's $3 a square foot. It goes like $20 per, or $60 per square foot. You know, it's just a tremendous difference. So. A lot of the rural roads like this are basically chip sealed roads, and that's what we're probably going to get out there. The big roads like Bear Creek, we rebuilt Bear Creek. You know, we resurfaced that that road, and to see those big holes out there now, it's it's kind of you know it's kind of hard on us. But we resurfaced those roads. We resurfaced SoCal San Jose Road. So pavement is based on what they call a pavement condition index, and um, we were at 55 which is not great, but it's really, we were moving upwards five years ago. We were literally going up, you could see, climbing. And the, then the economy went flat. We were not getting any gas tax. They cut the gas tax. And we're down now to like a 42, you know, 44, 42. Um, last year, I was, like I said earlier, I was with some Washington State engineers, and they were asking me, what's your, you know, we're all engineers, we're sitting around, what's your payment condition index? You know, it's like, <laughs> kind of fun stuff. One guy said, oh, mine's 82, and the other guy said 86. And that's, that's like superior roads, you know, that's, that's unbelievable roads. I said, really? That, that, that's, that's good. Yeah, we get all types of money, because we don't know what to do with it. And I'm going, oh my god, you know, I want that, 
I want your job, you know, because we can fix roads. We love to fix roads. I mean, we literally love to fix roads. Our engineers are really good at fixing roads. When we have the resources, we can do it. But a 44 is a failed road overall. Is, is that average for the whole county? Yeah. yeah. But then do, you, do, do people realize that it's much less than that for the mountain roads? Yeah, and, 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 the, and, and, the, and the thought is, I kind of give you a thought, our, our, our very urbanized roads like Bear Creek and Soquel and you know some of the others, a lot of Soquel Drive, um, some are in really good condition and, and overall our major arterials were above a 70 because we got a lot of grants for that and the grants were federal highway grants and you can only put them on federal way routes. We couldn't put them on the local roads. We had no money for the local roads or the residential streets. Measure D, SB1, is going to be used on the local streets. That's what we're going to use it for. We're going to, and we'll still go after the big grants for the big federal, federal roads, but Measure D, SB1, is for the local roads. Um, 44 is not, it's not something I'm proud of, but I can tell you, Monterey is below 40. They're down, they're down the low 30s. Um, I think we've got some 20s. You, you definitely have 20s out there. So what I would suspect for most of the rural roads, the mountainous roads, you're going to get a chip seal. We're going to try and flatten them out as best we can. We're going to do a chip seal. Because that's traditionally what you got. Um, I would say some of our collector roads out there, you're going to see a higher quality road, like, like um, um, not well, well uh, no, not really. Probably, probably Grand Hill Road, um, things like that. You know, those type of roads. Um, higher use roads, we have a lot of volume out there. So, so Mount Charlie will probably I, get... Should I call your office? Because I live on a road, Schulte's Road. Oh, I know. And um, I used to have three ways to get out. I now have one. Mm -hmm. And between where I live and uh, Laurel, yes. you know, to be able to get out to 17, there is a um, dip in the one um, one lane road that is yes, at us. least a foot below the rest of the road. Yeah, we need to know that. So I'm really frightened, to be honest. That means there's there's potentially that thing's going to slip. Right. So drive carefully here, but let us know that. We're driving as far over yeah. on the ride right as we can, okay. you know, depending on which way. And we might have identified that as a as a site that's a FEMA site. So what I would ask is, yes, please call us or send us a letter or go on our website, Santa Cruz County Public Works, go on our website and, and tell us. If you have an address around there, we'll send someone out there and take it's a look. It's right about Royce's place on there. You think I know Royce's place? Up, yeah. <laughs> well, well, everybody's good enough. Well, you know all the roads in the I, county, right? <laughs> I've driven every single road, but... I don't get out there like I used to. I'm, I'm more of an office hound now. I mean, it's literally, I, 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 I wish I was doing more engineering. I miss doing the engineering. Um, He's the guy who you don't know what to do on Gregory Lodge. That's his house. You know, I can steal out, guess some of those engineers, you know, because I've been I don't around. Know if the department's been up there since the so Yeah, it's, it's ugly. Oh, it's ugly. Lady in the back. Do you have long-term plans to improve the temporary bridge on Nelson Road? Yes, yes, we do. And, and when would that be? Oh, that's <laughs> you know that's a that's probably a FEMA road. It's going to take some time to get through FEMA and Cal Lewis on that. So yes, we do. But well, we're happy to have that open now. Mm -hmm. You know, because we that, that bridge is very expensive to put out there. So, um, but yes, we do have. We we're going to put a new culvert in there probably. At some point. Well, I'm I'm just wondering what how many years down the line. It's it's at least one to four years out. Uh huh. Yeah. With one of our county lines being the Harbor River, yes. I'm wondering how awkward that is for you for flood control and everything else. Um, very difficult. Um, we work with Monterey County side, and they don't. We have a pretty good drainage zone down there that helps us maintain that that levee system and. I'll give you an example, in 95, it broke on the Monterey side. We settled for the most money on the lawsuit, even though it broke on the Monterey side. I thought we should fire those attorneys. But um, it's, it's, when you get into a situation like you have a major break, and, and that's why we jumped on on our side um, to fix that road, because we were going to lose that. We were going to lose the levy this year on the Paro, and, and all that property 
Highway 129 out would have been all flooded out there. But yeah, it's we work with them closely, but we do have a project in in the works with the Corps of Engineers. And, you know, if you want if you want to have a major headache, work with the Corps of Engineers <laughs> but on a levy project. It's um, it's been 20 years, 20 years, and they suck up money like I've never seen before. You know, I just think. So we're, we're, we're engaged with them. We try to get them out of San Francisco and go to the Sacramento office, the Corps of Engineers. I heard they're slightly better, but they're a tough group to work with. And, and I think they don't, have the, they don't have the the urgency that we see that we could have a major levy break. And, and also we include part of the uh, Salsa Pueyi down there. So yes, we do we do have issues and we're trying to work through them. So you said they suck up money. Is it non-value added sucking or is it actual materials and building stuff? It's um, it's um, it's it's through the environmental process and, and all the different alternatives and stuff. They just okay. It's so just, it's a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of paper shuffling, not necessarily building stuff. Well, we hope to get to that point. I was hoping in my career in eight years ago as being director when I got involved. I mean, I've been to Washington four times. Everybody says, yeah, you're good to go, and you get back, and things change. And it's, it's, it's a really, it's a bureaucracy I've never, ever encountered before. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm just, I'm just astonished how much money we can invest to move a project forward. I hope they never see this tape or anything. So but, in, in your department, you know, in terms of the county, how would you break out how much money is actually applied to, to roads in terms of equipment and, and people that are actually adding value versus the, the support structure? Well, okay, so the way it's, we have it in the red book, you've, you've seen the red book, but it, it's mostly broken out right now for the road crews. We're trying to you know, keep them going and trying to keep a, um, some history there that you know, the guys know how to fix things. We have a little bit invested into our, our design engineers. We have, we had, uh, I think it's three engineers, 3.7 engineers. We have a part-time person who's retiring in this year. Really good engineer too, I hate to see her leave. Um, working on roads, road design. And we have two operations engineers um, working on pavement management and day-to-day -day calls like you, know, you guys do. Um, so it's not very many engineers for 600 miles. No, what, what was the second one that does the payment management? It's the operations engineers, and um, it's been a tough year for that guy. He's, he's, he's going to take a step down and become a civil, just wants to do There's design. There's only one? There's two guys doing uh, payment management and operations. You know, anytime you have like something goes wrong with the culvert, they're out there looking at it with the crews, they're working with the crews to do projects. It's, it's been a tough year for us, you know, for a lot of guys. So um, we promoted a guy up, he's going to take that position. So um, it's, it's a struggle, you know, and, and I think resources help. And I can honestly say we have some of the best engineers I've ever seen in my life um, working for us. And then the local consultants are also very good. So, you know, it's, it, but it's, you got to have the resources to do it. You got to have the backing uh, and the support of the, of the county to do these type of projects. And that's what we worked on. You know, folks are great when they vote for Measure D, things like this, you know, so. Um, we're good at it. I mean, we really are good at it. Just give us, you know, give us a chance, give us the resources, you can do anything. Yeah, well, I have a couple thousand feet of road, you know, I have some acres, and, you know, <laughs> it, it costs me thousands of dollars a year. We have right. to buy seven transfer loads of rock to, to, to fill in some, a, a slide area this year. Right. And, you know, if I could have the county come in and do my roads, I, I would pay I would double my property taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, just because it's expensive. Well, you, you Not do, you do. Bob Bobcat. And well, we're getting, we're getting about 5.6 million. We used to get 8 million in, in gas tax. We got 5.6 million. That's how much it dropped. And, you know, we'll pick up again. We get you guys actually on your on your property tax bill. You pay 56 dollars and 40 cents per parcel. You, you've seen that on there. Um, that's about equipment to one pothole. Know, repair less maybe half the half the cost of the pollen send someone out there to do it we're working on some restructuring of our department right now see if we can cut our costs even further so we can extend the we can bring in more road crew people so there's all types of options on the table right now we're doing matrices matrix matrix on how we're doing our jobs both operations and in design projects 
we're trying to speed up you know the process to get through environmental I've asked I've asked the board to consider adding one person in planning to help us get through the environmental permitting we need that person over there you know because it's a bit of work to get through those those resource agencies so so we're trying to wrap our head around this we're trying to get the right people in the right place and hire the right consultants to do the work that's where we're at I can tell you right now I'm, I'm dealing with town of Davenport who has $67,000 in their budget and we were told they have a $400,000 pipeline project that was cut off in two locations their pipeline from San Vicente Creek down to the town to our water treatment plant and they have the highest water rates I've ever seen you know already but a $400,000 cost to them is, is tremendous so I've got I've got other consultants now or contractors looking at see can you do this for 150000 because I can't afford this over here. So there's so many different things going on in public works right now. It's just it's a busy time, and we were severely, severely impacted this year. And I just, I can't even tell you, it's overwhelming. And SB1, man, I'll tell you, that really helped us. No, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's going to be better days ahead. Who be a while until we see the money? Um, 1.8 this year, 4.4 next year, 6. Point something next year, 7 the next year. I mean, it's, it's going to be there. I don't know if I'll be there in four years, but <laughs> I don't know. This one, this was a tough year, and there's a lot of people going, my gosh, this is horrible. So, but again, feel free to contact us. If you see something out there, let us know because we'll send someone out there to take a look. Either um, our road superintendent, assistant road superintendent, or or any of our engineer staff, we'll send them out there. So we'll take a look. If you see anything sanitation-wise, if anybody lives in the sanitation district, you see bubbling anywhere, we need to know that. that that's a, that's a, you know uh, Boulder Creek, for example, they have their treatment plant up there. We need to know what's going on up there. So anyway, um, any any other questions? Thank your, you. Your website again? Would you just say? I, I would, it's just go to Santa Cruz County Public Works Department, and there's also Facebook if you want to look at it. We we upgraded our website this year, and hopefully we'll get to all those all those roads and give you some details over this next year where we are in these projects. So. Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys are just a pleasurable crowd to be around.